You're listening to the Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe, a podcast of curated conversations with C-suite leaders and those who support organizational growth and development. Get ready for inspiring interviews, educational lessons, and thought-provoking discussions that will challenge you to execute something new and innovative that will drive results in your organization. And now, here's Dr. Tanya Lowe. Hello, you're listening to episode 29 of the Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe. Using my results driven philosophy of strategy, leadership, teams, and customer experiences, I help organizations develop their best kept secret, their human capital. This summer, I had the opportunity to be the keynote presenter for the Montgomery, Alabama and Auburn, Alabama SHRM meetings. And if you're not familiar with SHRM, it's the Society for Human Resource Management. Um, So I, I had an opportunity to talk with them around this topic that we're going to discuss today, and it's upskilling and reskilling your employees in preparation for 2025. If you think about the changing landscape of entertainment, we've gone from blockbusters to streaming TV, from having a waitress bring us our food to being served by robots, and from a rotary phone to a mini computer that we call a phone, but it's much more like a mini computer in our hands with a talking option, I like to say. The landscape has changed. It's changed in how we consume our entertainment, how we order food, how we use our most coveted device, our phones. There there have been some tremendous changes over the years and the world of work is no exception. When we think about uh, all of these changes and things that may not be related to our work, we can't think of, we cannot not think about these uh, changes that are taking place in the workforce. The landscape of work has changed and is continuously changing at a rapid pace. Organizations are going to have to make sure that employees continuously upskill and reskill themselves to stay relevant in the workplace. In its Future of Jobs Report 2022, the world Economic Forum identified upskilling employees as a critical priority for organizations by 2025. So you're probably thinking, who the heck is the World Economic Forum? (laughs) Well, the World Economic Forum, or I like to say the WEF, not to be confused with the, you know, the wrestling federation, the World Economic Forum, they are the international organization for public and private cooperation. They are the forum that engages the foremost political and business leaders of society in order to shape global, regional, and industry agendas. They don't have the power to make decisions, but their research efforts have considerable ability to influence business decisions. And so that's that's why they're important. That's why they're at this virtual table for this discussion today. So back to the plot. <laughs> By 2025, 50% of all employees will need reskilling or upskilling to keep pace with technological changes. Now, if we were in um, uh, an audience, I'd show you this um, slide that has not only the technological changes that are going to be needed for 2025 or the technological skills, but also the Um, soft skills, if you will. So since you're listening virtually, I guess I'll just have to put it in the show notes so you can see it as well. So with that being said, I want you to think for a moment, when you think about half of your workforce, how many people is that? What does that look like? The best way to think about it is what are some of the issues you're having in the workplace right now? Um, Is it critical thinking? Is it strategic planning? Is it emotional intelligence? Is it communication? What are some of those issues that you're having now across the board? And then what are, what are some of those issues that you're having with your leaders and your leadership in the organization? So I have some things that I want you to think about, some skills that will be important for employees when it comes to upskilling and reskilling by 2025. And so, you know, I keep saying by 2025 because 
that's not very far away, right? It's it's a little over a year away, 2025. Um, wow. When I first heard this, this, this study, we were five years out. And so here we are um, a little over a year out a little, maybe a year and a half out from having to really think about and prepare for these changes. And I like to tell my clients, and I I said this when I spoke to the organization, these are things that you didn't, you probably really didn't need a report to tell you that they needed to take place. Um, But it's probably things that have been happening on a consistent basis that you kept pushing to the side or it wasn't a priority. But a lot of these things are priorities because they are the that that cog in the organizational will that keeps things running efficiently and effectively. So let's let's start with the first one. The first one is digital literacy. With the increasing use of technology in the workplace, it's going to be important for employees to have a great understanding of digital tools and technology. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, like I was, because I was late to the party with this, um, AI is here to stay. I mean, AI has evolved so much. So we've got chat GPT, we've got scheduling tools, we've got um, communication tools like Slack. Um, There's so many tools out there. And so it's going to be up to you as an organization to um, start using these tools and getting your employees comfortable with using these tools. And and if you're an HR professional, if you're not using ChatGPT to write those job descriptions, how are you living out there? How are you living? And so none of this stuff is going away, right? None of it is going away. You still need to have the knowledge to utilize them, but also think about how can I utilize them in the organization to increase productivity, to save time, to continue to make us cutting edge. Number two, critical thinking and problem solving. Oh my goodness. So I don't know if you've noticed it, but I know a lot of the organizations that I go, um, that I work with, People are struggling. They're already struggling with critical thinking and, and problem so- solving. And I, I personally, you know, blame it on the the education system, um, not the teachers. Teachers, we love you, but the way the education system is is designed, it's designed to move people along instead of really giving them an opportunity to think and learn how to think. So with that being said, I, I hear people saying, well, Dr. Dr. Tanya, how do we teach people how to think? Well, you can do that, right? <laughs> so you teach people how to think critically and you teach them um, problem solving by giving them a problem to solve. It's the old Rubik's cube, right? You give them a problem to solve instead of solving it for them. Many of my clients, it's like, if you mess up, you drop the ball, they're going to pick the ball up. They're going to run with it. They're going to fix it. And they're going to keep going. And now you have a team of people who can't think you can't go on vacation because you're the sharpest knife in the box. And so as automation and artificial intelligence become more and more prevalent, employees are going to need to be able to analyze complex problems and come up with creative solutions. They're going to have to think. And so this can be taught, but you have to be committed to the process of helping people think critically, helping them Um, when they, asking them to bring ideas to the table, asking them, well, what do you think? And tell them, go sit with it for a while. Let them go do the research and come back and present their ideas. Let them get comfortable with that. And in that you're developing not only a skill, but you're, you're developing a staff person that can think on their own. And if you're not there or you're on vacation or you're away at a meeting, you know, by giving them these thinking exercises um, that over a period of time that you can trust them. The third one is emotional intelligence. And last year, um, my team and I, we all completed the immersion, emotional intelligence certification. Now we've been teaching and training and talking about it for years, but we wanted to um, 
upskill ourselves as a team, as an organization, and become certified. So emotional intelligence is the ability to empathize with others, communicate effectively, work collaboratively with others. Um, It's becoming so important as workplaces become more diverse and more remote. The pandemic did a, a doozy on us. I think we're still recovering from it. And so we, we've got to tap into empathy. We've got to tap into um, understanding and listening a little bit more. I just did a, a workplace leaders uh, disc with some leaders uh, for a, a client that I'm working with, and many of them struggle with empathy. Many of their, many of their employees they need that, you know? So I, I've heard people say, you know, these the employees today are just so soft. Well, that might be the case, but guess what? They're gonna get softer. So <laughs> you've got to prepare, you've got to prepare um, your workforce and your existing workforce on what does it look like to be able to empathize with others communicate efficiently and and effectively, but most importantly, still hold people accountable, right? Number four is adaptability and flexibility. The ability to adapt to new situations, learn quickly. Again, everything is changing so fast. Everything is changing so fast. I mean, if you just even look at your telephone, um, the... I think I have an iPhone 12. They're an iPhone 14 now, but they're coming out with new technology every 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 six months almost. And so when you think about the things that we have to learn, if we stay in a place of continuous learnership, <laughs> I am in a place of of being a continuous learner. I work for an organization where continuous learning is valued. And so when I do that, I am learning how to adjust and adapt quickly because things can change quickly. So I don't have time to feel some kind of way about it because that's going to slow down productivity. Now you may indeed feel some kind of way about it, but you're going to need to adapt to new situations and learn quickly. Number five is data analysis and interpretation. I'm gonna tell you, I love data. I will ask people, what does the data say? Most of the time they can't tell me because they have not run, um, they've not done any surveys. They've not talked to the staff. They, They don't know what the data says in their organization or among their consumers. So as data becomes more abundant and important in decision-making, the ability to analyze the data and interpret the data is going to become more critical. One of the the exercises that I like to do, even with this talk that I've been doing around the country, is to having people take the actual um, original article with all of the data in it and break it down and look at how does this apply to our organization? What do we need to do? What pieces are relevant to us and what pieces are not? And how do we how do we start today? Um, I encourage organizations to keep your your fingers on the pulse of of data look at data use data and it doesn't have to be that you have to bring in a huge research team you can collect data just by talking to people at all levels of your organization number 6 creativity and innovation i love um I love talking about creativity and innovation because that's the sweet spot or the secret sauce, unfortunately, in many organizations. You know, we we have to get away from group think. <laughs> we have to get away from everybody thinking the same. And so with the increasing um, importance of design thinking and customer experience and creativity and innovation skills, 
these are things that will be important for employees to differentiate themselves. This is how employees will add value to the organization. This is how you will add value to your organization by being more creative, by being more innovative, by taking more risk, by stepping outside of the box, by getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. So here's an assignment for you. I want you to think about um, what, whatever your role is, you're listening to this podcast, whatever your role is, I want you to come up with, I'm going to say 10, but you don't have to stop at 10. Come up with at least 10 ways you can incorporate innovation and, or be more creative in what you do every day. Then the second part of that assignment is how can you model that behavior to your team? Okay. So I want to hear what you come up with and how it goes for you. Number seven, leadership and management skills. As organizations become flatter and more team-based, leadership and management skills are going to be important for employees at all all levels to effectively lead and manage um, and lead and manage others. So when I think about that, I I think about something um, my mentor, John Maxwell says, he says that managing, you manage processes, you lead people and we're all leaders within an organization, regardless of our title. And so we've got to get away from thinking that leadership is based on um, what seat or corner office you're in. If we're teaching everyone leadership skills, how to lead, how to manage processes, how to develop teams, how to work together, how to be emotionally intelligent, opening the door for creativity and innovation. It's really going to grow our teams and move them forward in a way that we've never even imagined. Number eight, communication and interpersonal skills. Let me tell you, these are some soft skills that are never ever going to go away. As long as you have humans in an organization, you're going to need to work on communication and interpersonal skills. And this is, um, this is so important, especially with remote work being more prevalent, effective communication and interpersonal skills are more important now than ever before. And it, it helps when it comes down to virtual collaboration and you know how are we building relationships with others and strong relationships strong collaborations strong virtual teams and guess what it can be done we we can no longer be in this place of well we don't do virtual the pandemic proved us wrong for that we do do virtual. (laughs) So now we have to think about how do we virtual well? And we do that through our communication and interpersonal skills. So overall, employees who focus on um, upskilling and reskilling in these areas will be better prepared when it comes to the changes that will take place in the, the work environment as we move toward 2025. Um, Individuals who make up companies' workforces are responsible for its wins and its losses. So think of it this way. If your organization employs people who have more education, they have more developed skills and more work experience, then your organization will be able to accomplish so much more. Now, when I say more education, I'm not talking about more degrees, more licenses, more certifications. I'm talking about these eight skills that we talked about, um, that I just talked about today. I'm talking about um, upskilling them with information and application. Um, So that means the way we train is going to have to be different. We can't just pass off um, information but how do I apply this? What does this look like when I'm talking to a staff person and I need them to perform when they're underperforming? And that's where empathy and emotional intelligence comes in and, and communication, because there's so many leaders that um, 
that will rather not deal with an issue at hand than address the issue. So upskilling and reskilling can have significant benefits for your organization. And I'm not going to get into that now. I think I'm going to give you some time to digest this information and save that for another episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Reskilling and Upskilling. Visit the show notes page to subscribe, order your copy of a of our Amazon number one bestseller, Results Driven Organizations, The Four Keys to a High Performance Workplace, and grab our special gift to you for being a value listener. I'm also going to put some, um, some treats in the show notes page for you. I think I also mentioned um, a couple of uh, tools for you, so they'll also be in the show notes page as well. Thanks for listening. Until next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Results Driven Organizations podcast with Dr. Tanya Lowe. Be sure to review the show notes for the resources mentioned. And don't forget to grab your free gift available at freegiftfromtanya.com. Until next time.